Hello, hello! My name is Callista, and welcome back to Her Story. In the last episode, we discovered that Hannah and Simon's marriage wasn't as rock solid as Hannah has been claiming it was. We learned that Hannah got pregnant when she was a teenager, that's why she and Simon got married, but unfortunately she miscarried and that left her infertile. And we also learned that at the time of these interviews, Eve was currently pregnant and I am willing to put money on Simon being the father. Because we got that one clip where Eve was like, I was singing in a bar, he approached me, he never told me he was married, and that line screams of shenanigans to me. Now then we just searched for birthday, so next on my list is reflection. Aha! Oh, come on. Come on, game. You're fine. You've got this. Game? Game? Oh, shit. Game? Thank you. Yes. The first time we saw each other, it was strange. We both realised at the same moment, I think. We must have seen each other before, but there was this instant when we first realised it wasn't a reflection. The reflection was staring back. I think I was five. It was my birthday. My reflection was wearing a party hat and waving. I knew what party hats were from books. And it suddenly occurred to me, today must be my birthday. I waved back and we just spent ages waving at each other and copying each other's movements. Okay, so this is Eve talking about the kind of when she realized I have a twin. Because yeah, they um she mentioned before that Florence, the midwife who raised Eve, lived opposite Hannah which and I said at the time that must be such a weird thing if you're gonna steal a baby like if if you really have to why would you steal the baby of someone who lives nearby to you that's that's a bit jammy mother wanted me to grow my hair long but I kept cutting it myself I wanted to look like my reflection she always had short hair when she was little Mother would hide the scissors, but I would find a way. Cut it with a bread knife, something like that. My reflection would always leave her house and go on adventures, but I never could. Mother taught me at home, and I had books and TV. TV was magical, but it was only on when it wanted to be, so... I spent a lot of time reading books. Mmm. Fairy tales. That's why her head is full of them. Also, I find it very interesting. She refers to Florence as mother, but then she refers to her biological parents as mum and dad. I find that very interesting. I wanted to see my reflection. I thought that if I touched her, something would happen. We would become one. One girl. The fairy tale was over, the witch was dead, and I'd be restored to my rightful place. Yeah, Eve has... Eve has more of an investment in the twin thing than Hannah does. And I know that sounds a little bit weird because Eve was the one who got the tattoo. Eve was the one who permanently marked herself to be like, I am an individual. You would expect that to be the twin who's like, I'ma live my own life. But really, Eve spent so much of her childhood looking at Hannah and being like, why does she get to do 
all of these things. I'm stuck here. I can't leave this house. She was effectively held prisoner almost. And whereas Hannah, you know, I, I get the feeling that Hannah was a bit of a spoiled child. Her parents gave her everything she wanted and you know, she was kind of used to getting her own way and then suddenly, oh, I can't get my own way anymore. There's this girl who looks like me and I've hidden her in my attic and if I tell my parents, what if they get pissed at me and oh God, I don't want them to be angry, blah, blah, blah. Now I'm kind of stuck in this situation. I, I really do think that the only reason Eve got that tattoo was as a kind of, um, there, now now we can't be the same because she's moved on, therefore I have to move on, but I really don't want to move on. I want to be the same. I want to be one, but I can't. Biscuit tin. Okay, only one for biscuit tin. There's been a couple of mentions of a cat. Ah. No, they were shut. Most of the windows are really hard to open anyway. It's stifling in summer. They were painted over by my dad. Could have left a door open accidentally. Or there's a cat flap in the back door. Okay. So I think the police are probably asking, you know, how do you leave your doors unlocked? Do you leave your windows unlocked? Is there any way someone could get into the house? And she said, a cat flap. We have tiny burglars in our neighborhood. No, no cat. My parents had a cat before they died called Domino. It was this little black thing with white dots. And we never did anything about the cat flap, but if you were thin, you could maybe squeeze through it. You would have to be either really thin or, oh, like, like, maybe if they, maybe Domino was like a fat-ass cat. Jesus. We loved our cat, Domino. Um, he had this little bell around his neck to stop him from killing birds in the garden. And we used to write each other notes and put them in the bell and we could send them to each other. Mum found some of the notes once and she thought I was just writing to myself because our handwriting was identical. And... Um, we had our own words for things, so she didn't quite understand them anyway. Lucky. Uh, what else? I, I want to write down identical. I want to do that later. Identical. I, I have, like, no space on this piece of paper. Uh, domino, just to see if there's anything else. No, only those two. Okay. Palindrome. Okay, only the two for palindrome. Now then, and this is where my notes start to get confusing. Um, wig. Oh. A wig? You mean, but what type of wig? Yes, yeah, so they um, there was mention that someone found a blonde wig in the house, and I, I think early they were trying to say like, oh well, maybe maybe the, the there's a cat flap, so maybe a, because they don't have a cat now, so they were trying to pull it off as like some random cat found a wig, brought it to our house, and just left it. Oh, that's a really stupid lie. No, I've never worn a wig. What kind of wig? Her body language in that was interesting. Because she was trying to... What I got from that was she was trying to be like, oh yeah, this this totally doesn't bother me. What do you mean? What do you mean? Like, trying to be... Every, da, 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 trying to be very happy and, you know, like, oh, completely unbothered. But there was that undertone of, like, panic. Of, explain, what do you mean? The parents decided there would be a wedding. After the wedding, Hannah moved in with his parents. There was no way I could follow, so we were separated again. I stayed in the attic. It was hard. It's like I suddenly didn't exist. 
I would sneak out, but in case anyone recognised me, I started wearing a wig. Hannah and I would meet up in the park. I was trying to get pregnant, but I couldn't. I mean, I couldn't do it with anyone we knew, so it was sex with strangers, drug guys I'd met in clubs, in parks and alleyways. I was 17. It felt like I was being punished. But it was Hannah who had betrayed us. I had to stop when one of the guys gave me an STD. When we met up, it was disturbing. For the first time, my reflection, she didn't look like me. She was fatter, flushed. If anything, I was getting skinnier. I had a hearty look sometimes. We talked about what to do. Was it time to become our own people? I mean, that seemed like the right thing to do, but neither of us wanted it. We agreed that her and Simon would get their own place as soon as possible, and then I could move in. And that was the plan. That is disturbing. I do wonder if... I do wonder if what she's saying here is a little bit tainted. Because... Everything that Hannah has said about that time, she she talks about how great it was to be on her own, and then here we have Eve being like, neither of us wanted to be our own people. I I really get the feeling that how do I put this? That that is Eve's truth. Eve believed that at the time neither of them wanted to be their own separate people and she was banking on, you know, them getting their own place, I'd move in, and then it, everything would be just like it was. We'd continue swapping places and all of that, but I get the feeling that Hannah was never going to allow that. That maybe Hannah was kind of being like, oh yeah, yeah, we can get our own place and you can move, move in as a kind of like, just like, keep her happy, bide my time until I can get rid of this girl. That's that's really the feeling I get with these two, that Eve is very invested in the relationship and Hannah is kind of like, when she's useful, I'm there. But when she isn't useful, she pisses me off because she makes my life exponentially harder. Because, you know, we, we have to keep these diaries and we have to have these rules and I can't do what I want to do, so I'm going to attempt to drown her one time, but I won't. Da, 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 da. I just... I find it so... The lengths that Eve is going to to try and maintain her connection to her reflection, to keep them looking the same, is so sad. This was nine, about nine. I went round and she was waiting for me. She was furious and so angry. The kind of anger you can only have towards yourself. We screamed at each other, argued, cried, we fought. I hit her back, left a bruise. I had my wig on from performing, she tore it off. Eventually we grew tired of fighting and I left. Oh. Again, another. She was angry at me. The only kind of anger you can have towards yourself. Eve really does view them as being the same person. I. I'm wondering, I'm wondering if maybe they're, hang on a minute, I can, I can tell, aha, uh -huh, the, the database checker, yeah, this is, this is one of the final ones, so I'm guessing that 
maybe they asked her, you know, what happened on the night Simon died. We really haven't heard much about Simon's death in a while. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that was what happened. Also, one of them drove up to Glasgow and got checked out at the hospital. And presumably the police will have checked those records and presumably those records will say we checked out someone who was pregnant. Because as much as they can fake, you know, being the same person to, you know, people who aren't performing any kind of medical exam, Hannah can't pretend to be pregnant. She can wear, like, a fake belly, but as soon as you start getting to, like, okay, we'll do a scan of your belly to make sure that the baby's okay, you, she can't fake that. So Eve must have been in Glasgow. Because otherwise the, the police would have, you know, gotten those records, and those records would say, woman claim it, came in claiming to be pregnant, we found she wasn't pregnant, we sent her away. Okay, after wig, sex. Oh, a lot. Nine entries found, but we've only have access to the first five. Really? You're going to ask me about my sex life? I mean, isn't that private? Oh, <laughs> sorry, Hannah. Are you married? How is your sex life? Yeah, they're... Oh, God, I will admit, that's a bit of a shitty thing. Like, my husband is missing. How often were you boning? Oh, God. <laughs> so, our sex life is probably fairly average for a couple after ten years of marriage. Okay. No. You're talking to the wrong person if you think I'm some kind of slut. Do you think I'm the kind of person that would have had sex with all those guys? Oh! I do not know where that was coming from. Oh, maybe, they, maybe they've asked her about prior boyfriends and then they've said, did you have sex with all of them? Okay, I, that's my only guess. No. Um, I was 15. Carl was older. 17, I think. I was really into him, regardless of how he actually behaved. Lots of drunken teenage sex. We did it in a church once. It was stupid. So he got tired of us and we split up after about six months. It was sad, but those early experiences, they help you realize who's really important to you, you know? Family. Okay, we've got a new name, Carl. Okay, she put a lot of emphasis on family, so I wanna search that up later as well. Uh, while he's fresh in my mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Was he my first? No need to be so coy. <laughs> no, he wasn't my first. That would have been Carl. He was a local boy in a band. He was a bit of a shit. But he was sexy. We were 15. Oh. Okay, so point one. Eve is a lot more open about sex, whereas Hannah is a lot more prudish. Secondly, she said, we were 15. And then over here, they were like, oh, so you were both 15? And she's had to be like, oh shit, no, I was 15. He was 17. But what she actually meant was Hannah and I were 15. Family. So, Carl fucked off, and then there were other boys here and there, and then Simon. 
Now I have a wonder. Okay, yeah, so um, I was wondering which came first because Hannah was wearing this outfit. Yeah, so um, they, they must have asked Hannah this question. She reacts very badly. They then ask Eve this question. She's like, oh yeah, that's fine. And I'm guessing that's maybe one of the things that kind of tipped them off at like, we've got the same person, but they're acting very differently on, you know, certain days when we ask them basically the same question. Some differences? She's a better driver than me. She passed the test for us. I tried to take it and nearly crashed the car. <laughs> Learned that you can't rely on confidence to get you through everything. Mm. She is the shy one. She was especially shy around boys. If Hannah liked a boy, I would have to pursue him. It was that way with Carl. Hannah met him first. She had such a crush. I let him take my virginity after a night that his band had played at. It got difficult. When I was with Carl, we would have sex, but Hannah couldn't. Couldn't let him see she was a virgin. She had lots of excuses. After a while, we decided that I should take Hannah's virginity. It's not that different to a bruise, pulling a tooth, a graze. We used a hairbrush. After that, we took him in turns, though. I was always the one who seduced the boys. Until Simon. See, this is what I mean. Hannah is very content to let Eve kind of go and do her business. But then it's... How, how do I explain this? I have a lot of feelings right now and I'm like, I can't verbalize them. So... Like, for, for most teenagers, if, if you're having sex when you're a teenager, it's like, you know, lo losing your virginity. It's kind of like one of those big things. Like, you don't, you want to find a nice, well, in this case, a nice boy and, like, hopefully you'll be in love and all that kind of cliched gobbins. And because Hannah's head is filled with fairy tales just as much as Eve's. So I can see Hannah having those same, like, you know, my prince in shining armor coming to take my virginity. And instead she's got Eve doing that because Hannah inadvertently painted herself into a corner, convincing Eve to allow Carl to take her virginity. And it's like, well, shit, now I can't do this because he'll know that something's up. And when I say that Eve robbed Hannah of what is supposed to be quite a, a nice, you know, intimate moment. I don't mean that, like, Eve was malicious. I mean that it was just a case of we need to be practical. You're a virgin. He doesn't realise you're a virgin. We need to do something here. And I can I can see why Hannah might be a bit like, you know, that that bitch stealing all of the nice things, all of the nice experiences in my life. I can't wait until I can be rid of her. Hannah was so smitten with Simon. She started getting jealous, didn't want to share. Even the first date, we went to see Tom Cruise at the old Odeon. We both went, kept changing places in the toilet. We only had one best dress, so we had to keep swapping clothes. Must have thought we had terrible bladder problems. The next date, it was my turn. Um, at the end, I let him kiss me. But that was it. We didn't want another car on our hands, and the Ouija board had said to hold back. After that, it was Hannah's turn, and she slept with him. Broke the rules deliberately broke the rules. She wanted to be the first to sleep with him. <laughs> I 
I mean, that's when she got pregnant, from that one time. More evidence that uh, Hannah didn't want to keep living by the rules. She wanted to be her own person. She wanted her own boyfriend that she didn't have to share. Also, I noticed that Ouija board mention. Ooh, where do I want to go next? I'm gonna I'm gonna go for Ouija next, just because I don't know if I've spelt that right, and the clip is just down there, so. Yes! When beautiful people died, we always felt like it was a sign. You remember Princess Grace? Grace Kelly? She died in a car crash the year before we met Simon. We used a Ouija board to speak to her, and that gave us the power to find him. That's what we thought then. That people who die tragically leave some kind of magic behind. We used to share dreams. We used to wake up and write them down in our diaries immediately and compare them. Hmm. That's a bit weird, but, you know, kids believe the oddest things. Oxford. Have I spelt that right? Yes. There was a conference. Something to do with double glazing. In Oxford? Okay. Are you sure? What would you be doing in Oxford if there was no conference? I remember calling him. He said it was boring and he spent most of the time at the bar. Oh. I don't know what to make of that because this is Eve. This is clearly Eve. I'm wondering if this is a case of the rules kind of binding them a little bit too tightly. So, Hannah... Okay, think, thinking straight, thinking straight. So, Eve said that Simon met her in a bar. And she didn't know what he was doing there. I'm, I'm wondering if maybe this is where they first met. They met in Oxford. She was singing at the bar. He approached her. Um... And obviously, Hannah wouldn't know this. And so I'm wondering if this is a case of like, Eve is, you know, like, I've, I've got to pretend to be Hannah, I've got to pretend to be Hannah, Hannah doesn't know this, but oh shit, they're screwing me over. Okay, I've got to admit to something, it was a romantic weekend away. Ooh, that's, that's a bit weird. Unless of, maybe, hell, maybe Simon was having affairs with lots of people. If he was willing to sleep with Eve... Which is a bit weird. That woman looks a hell of a lot like my wife, so I'm gonna screw her. That's a weird thing to do, in my opinion. Baby. Ah. We spent the wedding night in a hotel in Brighton. It would have been too much to do more. We were saving for the baby. It was wonderful to be in a hotel, away from home, just alone together. Since then, we've always tried to get away for our holiday. What did I say? We have Eve telling us that, oh, neither of us wanted to be our own person, but then we have Hannah saying it was so good to be alone. No. I lost the baby. I had a miscarriage at eight months. We carried on living at Simon's parents until... That was only a few months after. Oh, I... Because she said that in a very weird way, you know, it was only a few months after. I'm like, th there's something else there. And I don't just mean the next clip. There's something there. It was after dinner. I had spoken to Simon's parents on the phone. I looked up for an early night and I suddenly had this thought. I think it was something his mother had said. She'd been speaking about old stuff. Sad stuff. About when we lived there. About the baby. There's some boxes in the cellar. Nursery stuff. 
stuff we never needed and I never had the heart to throw out. And I suddenly remembered that when I looked down there the week before, those boxes, that pile was in the wrong place. I went cold all over. I went down there with a torch and went straight to the back and that's when I saw the bin bags. Pulled them open, saw the body. I screamed and that's when I called the police. Oh, damn! Okay. So Simon was in the cellar, jeez, okay, okay, when is this? When is this in the timeline of events? Okay, so 18th of the 6th, she reports him missing. 25th of the 6th, he's still missing, but they're you're just kind of like asking her general stuff, kind of invasive stuff, but whatever. And then here on the 27th of the 6th, wait a minute. Yeah, sorry, I thought, I thought that was the 28th, no, 25th. And then on the 27th, she's found the body in the cellar, called the police, and now that now it's a murder. Okay. Okay, I getcha. I was wondering when we were gonna learn how Simon was found. Yes. It was a shock to him. I mean, we never thought it was possible. I don't know what he... I mean... I hadn't decided whether to keep the baby. I wasn't really ready to talk to him about it. Okay. Okay. That's very interesting. So my... My gut... says that... Hannah and Eve are involved in this somehow. Because if... I would be very surprised if the game kind of pulled a switcheroo and was like, it was actually his boss, Eric, who killed him. I'd be like, what? Then why are we focusing on this lady? Like, what is this? So my gut says they have to be involved in this somehow. At the same time, if you've killed someone and you've put him in your basement, why would you, admittedly, at some point people are gonna notice he's missing. He's got a regular job, he's got friends. So reporting him missing, fine, but revealing his body in the basement, that, I, I'm not entirely sure. Now, I am out of time for this episode, so, Please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below, and if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next episode.